All right, our next speaker is um, uh, Ian Purdy, who is the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Paladin Energy, the largest of the, the listed ASX uh, uh, uranium exposures. And uh, it's, I guess it's where the journey for us started uh, those, all those years ago, four years ago, Ian, when we initiated coverage on, on Paladin. I think you were 10 cents when we started covering you and uh, in a, an industry that was completely unloved. And uh, it's a long way uh, from there these days. So um, it's delighted to have you back as you are now you know, if it's, if it's not today, it's very close. It's uh, first production from Langer Heinrich is, is must be imminent. I look forward to hearing your update on it. And uh, also joining us from Paladin is, uh, is Alex Ryback, who uh, uh, does the corporate development marketing and uh, can, can answer questions on on the market if we have time for that as well. So I won't end into your time, Ian. I'll, I'll pass to you. Uh, look forward to hearing the update on where Langer Heinrich is, up, is at. Yeah, thanks very much, Andrew. And thanks, everyone, for your time today. Um, I'll get straight into it. We'll, we'll do a short presentation and then leave plenty of time for Q&A. And having Alex on the, right, on the line, it's a great opportunity to uh, ask some questions about what's happening in the uh, uranium market at the moment. Um, Andrew, can, can you see that okay, my share? Uh, we can see it. We can't see any of the, uh, any of the material yet. And all we can see is a, is a blank screen there, mate. Right? Okay, let me, let me get that up. How about now? No, we, all we still see is the, um, the purple background colouring. Okay, I'll get Parla or Alex to um, put the slides up. And, and look, I'll kick straight into it. Um, it's, it's a really good time for us at the moment. We're, we're in a position where, as you mentioned, Andrew, production is imminent and um, potentially, you know, we'll be getting a big drum of Easter eggs um, for Easter. But it's a, it's a great time for us, and we're seeing the uranium market certainly sorry, Ian, is in a Ian, very you might healthy. Need to stop, sorry to interrupt. You might need to stop sharing your screen to allow Paola to, or Alex to put the put the slides up. Okay, there we go. Sorry, over to you again. No, thank you. So, so it's a nice convergence of issues where, as a company, we've got a massive catalyst which is coming back to full commercial production at a time where we're seeing real fundamental strength in the uranium market. And the two together mean we have a very straightforward pathway to some pretty exciting times. So for us, it's a simple five-step process. Firstly, um, we're really pleased to be resourcing a carbon-free future. <clears throat> you know, the uranium uh, nuclear market's up and about. I'll talk more about production, which is imminent. We've got a world-class leveraged contract book, which is essential for uranium. You have to have customers to play in the uranium space. We've shown remarkable financial strength and discipline over the last four years, and we'll continue to do so. And we're really excited by what's next for Langer Heinrich, Paladin, and the rest of the company. So we've got a clear pathway and we look forward to bringing that to market over the next six to 12 months. Thanks, Paul. We've got a simple mission, which is resourcing a global carbon-free future. Nuclear energy is the second largest source of global clean energy. It's, it's up and about globally, the turnaround in sentiment and the turnaround in fundamentals in support for nuclear has been nothing short of remarkable Someone said to me many years ago, you can't unrun, outrun the science. The science of nuclear energy is it is the perfect partner to the interruptible renewables that are um, being implemented around the globe. Nuclear energy is 24-7, 365 days a year, baseload, secure energy, completely carbon free, and is a perfect match for the interruptible renewables that are being put in. Thanks, Paul. Let's talk about Langer Heinrich. Um, we're building off a very successful past history with 10 years of production and 43 million pounds. Uh, the present is pretty exciting for us. You would have seen we put in our first ore feed back in January. We indicated we're still on track um, for the end of March or early in April if we did see some slight delays. We've spent the last six weeks progressively commissioning the plant and filling the plant with metal in process. It took about six weeks to fill the plant. It's quite a large plant. And we're right on track 
for our first commercial production in the next couple of weeks. What I can tell you is over 95% of the plant is now up and running. We've commissioned all um, circuits right through to the very final circuit. And we're currently in the process of hot commissioning our drying and packaging plant. Um, we've got the kiln up and running. And really now we're just waiting for our drumming process to commence. So it's going to be very soon. And we'll certainly let the market know when, when we achieve that. What's really pleasing is as we've hot commissioned various parts of the circuit, we've handed over management and control of the plant to our own staff, our own operations workforce. Uh, we've got over 285 operations employees now. And pleased to say they're running the plant extremely well and the plant's running well. So we're right there. Um, we can't wait to achieve that milestone. And, and it's mixed feelings because whilst it represents a massive effort over four years and some 2.5 million man hours on the project execution, it really is just the start of the journey. So, so um, interestingly, we won't be celebrating it too much. We're, we're very focused on what's next. And part of what's next is the future. We'll bring the operation up to its full £6 million peak, peak production in financial year 26. But we also see incredible growth opportunities at Langer Heinrich and across the rest of our portfolio. Thanks, Paul. In terms of our off-take book, uh, we've got seven off-takes secured with the top of the industry, representing about 50% of our production. Where we stand here today, about 80% of our production out to 2030 is exposed to uncapped spot pricing. And then for the other 20%, we have some excellent um, base escalated contracts which support our operation and they're at premium pricing. I'll make note of one particular offtake um, with our largest customer, um, Chinese customer CNNC. We have an excellent contract, which is uncapped spot prices. That's the pricing mechanism in that offtake. Uh, but most importantly for where we are today, that offtake provides shipping flexibility. Um, our Chinese customer is very keen for as much production as we can send their way. Um, and we've negotiated flexible shipping as well as um, early payment. So we will receive a provisional payment when we load a ship on that one. So we're currently working with our Chinese customer um, to see if we can get an early shipment away in June, uh, which will be fantastic news. So we'll let you know how we go on that. Thanks, Paul. Looking at our financial strength, we've got plenty of cash. Our project's fully funded. We put in place a really smart syndicated debt facility, $150 million. As you'll recall, we've been working on that for some time, but we wanted to put it in place just before commercial production. And that gives us plenty of um, working capital, lots of capital flexibility, and allows us to focus on really driving our operational ramp up and maximizing our opportunity with our customers. We're also at a great point where we're looking to start um, cash collateralizing all of the strength in the uranium market. If everything goes to plan, we'll be doing a spot uranium shipment in June. And I, I'm just so excited with the prospect of converting that wonderful, strong uranium market into cash in the bank. Thanks, Paul. In terms of growth, we're going to get busy at Langer Heinrich. We see plenty of all body extension and um, growth opportunities. So as soon as we deliver production, um, you'll see us working on the Langer Heinrich upside. Um, we'll get a few drill rigs out there in the second half of the year. We'll look at the all body extensions. We've got a mining lease adjacent to our existing mining lease, which has had no drilling done. So we'll have a look at that. And there's also an opportunity to reconsider our long-term economics. Our current 77 million pounds of high quality reserves is based on a $50 uranium price. So we'll start looking at those longer term optimizations and there's a potential we'll see more ore coming into our plan over the next 12 to 24 months. 
Off the back of that, we'll see what we do with our processing plant in the midterm. And we're always open to new technology applications. And there's a couple, couple of opportunities bouncing around which could open up a heap of um, further or, or commercial or opportunities for us. Michelin, we've started to work Michelin again. Pleased to say we've got a couple of drill rigs there. Um, so we have our started drilling in and around our existing ore bodies. We're looking at um, putting together the project pathway for the next couple of years that will focus on updating the previous studies as well as looking for shallow extensions to our ore body. And then obviously in Australia, we've got some longer term assets, which would be significantly affected by some favourable policy changes in the states in which they are located. Thanks, Paul. So just finally, we're, we're on a pathway. We're about to have a fantastic catalyst, which is the biggest event our company has seen in over a decade. But for us, that's just the start of the journey. We're looking to translate that success on finishing the project into commercial production and shipping to our international customers. So looking at our timeline, watch out for our first production announcement soon. Look for our early shipment around June. And then in July, we'll come to the market with full production corporate guidance. And at that point, we are truly a production company. And then we look forward to updating you each quarter with our performance against that guidance. So thanks, everyone. And thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Ian, and, uh, and Paladin team. Um, yeah, look, well done getting through that quickly, Ian. At 12 minutes, it's, uh, you've set a new record for uh, for an overview. Terrific. We've got time for, for a few questions. So um, in terms of, you're obviously going to give us some guidance in July when you, when you get to that period. But just maybe give the audience here a little bit of a sense of the ramp up profile for Langer Heinrich. How quickly do you sort of get up to full speed with this operation, given that it's a restart of an existing uh, or existing plant? I presume it's it's a little going to be a little bit quicker than a than a, than a greenfields uh, operation. But maybe just talk us through that that ramp up profile. Yeah, it should be relatively fast by mining standards, and and I have to quantify that by saying by mining standards because mines do take um, some time to get up and running. So laying it out, if you look at our first quarter of production, we, we fully expect to get a shipment away and, and good value shipment. So that'll be really exciting for us. But we don't have a particular target for the first quarter. It's more about getting the plant set and running well going into financial year 25. Financial year 25, we expect to have a really strong year. We won't be a nameplate, but we will expect good production. If you look at our feasibility study, which we're working to, it would suggest circa 4 million pounds of material um, being produced in that first year. And we'll give you the exact number. So that's just order of magnitude. And that's at a very competitive cost because we are processing from pre-existing mine stockpiles. So we expect financial year 25 to be very strong. And then in financial year 26, we expect to hit our nameplate six million pounds when we recommence mining from our open pit mines. So in summary, a really strong, fast ramp up with some very good commercial outcomes for financial year 25. That's something that I think might not be uh, you know, completely um, uh, known to all of the audience here, that um, you're actually not commencing mining initially. You're, you're just uh, re-establishing production from the plant. What, what's your likely timing of, of when the mine operation restarts again? Andrew, we expect to be operating off stockpiles for the whole of financial year 25. We've got some excellent mine material which was stockpiled um, after an advanced mining program that was done when the operation was uh, previously in operations. Um, so we'd expect to recommence mining in financial year 26. However, I will put a caveat on that. If we find the throughput of the plant is stronger than our ramp up um, forecast, we could get through that stockpile quicker, uh, which is good news for everyone because we'll certainly be uh, producing more than we expect. So um, the base case is mining in 26, but we'll certainly be ready to go earlier if we find the plant overperforms in the first 12 months. Yeah, great. I mean, this is obviously a restart of an existing plant. I mean, you do, you've got some very good data on how this plant ran historically. 
Um, there were some wrinkles with it. Some of the recoveries weren't as weren't as good as um, perhaps nameplate should have suggested. And maybe talk to the audience through some of the improvements you've made to the uh, plant as you're bringing it back into production, and and why that gives you some confidence that you'll you'll get that nameplate second time round. The plant will run better this time round, and the reason being we've we've invested about sixty million dollars US in improvements to the plant. The, the biggest component um, we've put in is, is twofold. One is we've, we've put in um, surge capacity between the beneficiation plant, which is the crushing and the classification up the front and the leach circuit. That, that surge capacity should have been there um, from day one, but was left out. Uh, so we've put in two massive surge tanks. That gives us 12 hours of buffer between those two circuits. That, that results in a very stable back end and certainly eliminates some of the, the major wrinkle you're talking about with the prior operation of the plant. The second component that we brought is a world-class drying and packaging plant. We've sourced um, the best technology in the world. We've, we've gone to Canada to get that. It's the same system Cameco uses. So we've removed all personnel from the drying and packaging process and we've got a world-class installation in Namibia. And certainly we've set a new benchmark in Oc Health and Safety, quality and automation in Namibia, which is really exciting for us. So the plant is in fantastic shape. It's running really well already, and we expect to be very successful through our ramp up. Right. Well, we've got Alex online. I'd be remiss of me not to uh, just throw one question Alex's way. So Alex, um, you know, look, well done putting the, the, the Paladin contract together. I think you're in very good shape and you're clearly fully contracted in the very near term. But um, are, are you, you're obviously out there still engaging with the utilities and uh, and uh, you know, getting the feedback on what they're looking at. Maybe just some colour from you on what you're seeing in the term contract market and you know what what the um, what the pricing and the, the terms around the contracts are looking like, like these days would be useful. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Andrew. Uh, yeah, look, uh, we. We're exactly uh, where where we wanted to be when we announced the restart. We, as you mentioned, about fifty percent of our production to twenty thirty is uh, is contracted, um, and the vast uh, majority of our production is exposed to spot prices. Eighty um, percent of which, um, you know, the bulk of it is at as uncapped uh, market related prices. Um, so, so we're in a good position. I am uh, excited about delivering material into into this market, um, but and that's the short term. The longer term is we're seeing really strong demand from utilities. Um, you know, uh, we just I just recently received an RFP from a utility starting um, starting deliveries in twenty eight. That shows you that whilst a there is strong demand that. Um, that demand is not starting tomorrow. It's starting in you know in uh, in four years' time. Um, it's from our one of our existing customers that we keen to do more business with, um, and that's sort of uh, uh, quite uh, characteristic of the type of uh, uh, RFPs and discussions that we're engaged at the moment. So so we're seeing a lot of demand uh, in US, in Europe from the utilities as well as in China to support their their build out program. We're seeing really, um, you know, healthy price levels in terms of uh, term prices. Obviously, there's a lot of volatility in the spot still because of that, uh, you know, relatively liquid nature of the of the spot market. We are focusing on the term market. Uh, we're seeing the base escalated prices uh, gradually increase. Last report, it was seventy five dollars a pound. Um, you know, we're not seeing panic buying from the utilities, but we're, we're seeing healthy demand both. RFP off market, um, and we're engaging uh, in all those discussions. Uh, you know, and there'll be additional contracts that will layer into the book as, as the cycle progresses. Um, and you know, we're, we're really in a good position with good exposure to um, uh, to spot pricing at the moment. Excellent, terrific. Thank you for your insights, Alex. Um, Ian, um, congratulations on getting to this point. I know it's been a uh, it's been a, a big journey for you in the last three or four years, going through uh, everything you've had to go through to get to this point, and we really look forward to seeing that announcement that your first uh, commercial production has been uh, has been drummed, and and then the first shipment out in June. And there's a few of us also be very looking forward to getting there in uh, in May and actually seeing the operation for ourselves. So, um, congratulations to you and the Paladin team, and um, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks everyone. Thanks, Andrew.